May profits be upon you. We're going to go over the US dollar against the yen, the Japanese yen, USD, JPY. First, let's take a look at the old RT money meter. The RT money, the RT money meter, excuse me, <clears throat> tracks the rate of change of each currency from a futures perspective over a period of 15 weeks, about three months. And I update it every week. We want to see who's weakening and who's gaining strength, right? So if we look at US dollar and look at the yen, we see that they're on opposite ends of the spectrum, the weakest, the very strongest, excuse me, against the very weakest. And we can see last week, the yen was at minus 1398, and this week it's at minus 1448, getting a little weaker, gotten just a little bit weaker. And the same could be said for a US dollar, even though it's been number one for you know over a month or so, and uh, it's still number one. Last week it was at 765, this week it's at 590. Kind of stepped down in strength a little bit. Yeah, they had a little step down. Uh, that's something that we want to watch, isn't it? So we're at opposite end. So this should be a safe bet, right? The very strongest against the very weakest. Let me give you a warning. And I need you to pay attention big time to what I'm about to say. Caution. Caution on this. It's not the right color, is it? <laughs> Caution. Caution on this. <laughs> All right, that dark color. Matter of fact, just look. I'm just saying caution, man. Because the reason being is um, we might be in a situation, in the, uh, uh, particularly in the US, with historic inflation and oil losing 1%, right? Oil going down 1%, that is a sign of impending recession. Impending. It looms, man. And when you see oil going down, oh boy, that's not a good sign. And we may see capitulation in the markets. All right. We might be see, we might see a run, a sprint, a hard sprint to safe haven currencies. And that's the that's that's the reason why I'm, I'm giving this warning because we see a lot of money going, a lot of investment going into the US dollar leaving other currencies because the US dollar is the, the global currency, right? But in situations like these, in times of recession, and there's a flight, a, a big flight to safety, when you start to see panic selling in the markets, the yen outperforms the US dollar. So when they're paired up against each other, yeah, the US dollar has the upper hand right now, but you start seeing some panic selling in the markets and we start sliding in the recession, you're gonna see the yen drag US dollar down in this pair, okay? That's all I'm gonna say on that. So take this, uh, this analysis with you know, a grain of salt and look for your confirmations, all right? Just know that this can turn on a dime. This could reverse, all right? Now, let's get on with some, uh, some analysis. Let me show you this. What's the first thing that pops out to you, that should pop out to you? The first thing I notice is we got a bit of a trend, right? And that's, that's pretty cool. All right, we have some trend line uh, resistance here that's been respected and we have a breakthrough. Look at that, okay, that's interesting. Bear that in mind. This is the monthly now. We're doing top-down analysis. This is the monthly, all right? Also notice, where's the break of structure? Well, we have a break of structure here, all right? Come on, man. There you go. All right, we have a break of structure right there. That's big time structure. But what's bigger? Right here. We just took this high. That high is important. Why? 
because look what the date is. The date is 2002. 2002, a 20-year-old high we just took, all right? We took that liquidity up here. The last time we took an old high like this one was in 2007. And what did price do? It dropped. When you take that liquidity where there's a lot of liquidity, you, can you know there's a lot of liquidity here for people who took shorts. Look at all that. Look how far it dropped. You know, there are sellers here. Right? Market makers came up here, took them out of their trades, took all those stop losses, and then dropped. Got it? Here we are back to an, another old high, an even older one. I'm looking for price to turn around. I, I am. I'm not looking for shorts just yet. What would make me look for shorts? When we start breaking demand. When we start seeing demand fail. Right now, who's in control? Demand's in control. Until it starts to fail, I'm still looking for longs, period. All right? But I'm not too amped on trading this pair. All right? Now, I also want you to see what's ahead. We have pretty well-formed zone of supply here. And I'll mark it like so. This is a monthly that in there all right so maybe maybe this will be used as inducement for uh price to eventually come up here as the goal okay uh let's see all right so we want to be aware of that we could start to fall here we could start to fall here or pull back maybe to here, maybe to this demand, and then up. And then we can uh, start to see pr uh, price come down. Let's look on the weekly. Maybe we can see something clearer, all right? We see the same inducements. We see uh, price can go up higher. Can we refine this a little bit? Now, this is where the buying starts before the aggressive sell-off. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is right now. All right, so before I start refining, here's the old high, the break of structure. After a break of structure, don't we expect a return to impulse? Well, where will that return be? That is the question. We, could price come back here? It could, all right? We're not really getting a whole lot of information here on the weekly. If we go to the daily, we can see something happening here. Now, price, has came up here and took that high, took this, uh, uh, the breaking structure here, right? Came up, swing high, swing low, swing high. All right. And then another high, took out, took, uh, swept, swept this high here for liquidity and price started to drop a little bit. All right. Came down, breaking this structure. And we're like, oh, snap, hold on now. Maybe we might have turned bearish. Nope. What happened here? Did we get some news? I'm, I'm sure we did. This looks like uh, uh, news. I don't want to go looking for it, uh, looking for it now, but it was probably some news over here that caused price to come on up. I, it, that might have been uh, interest rates or interest rate decision or something, right? And uh, uh, then we have two days of bearishness, right? And then Friday, we have this bullish engulf. And now, see, the thing, the way I look at this is we had a very bearish engulf, right? It took the body in, uh, uh, broke the, the body of the, uh, broke the low, the close of the body uh, prior to it and its camp, it, it, its wick, right? And then the follow candle, the follow candle behind that bearish engulfer came down, opened, came up and tested the base candle of the bearish engulfer uh, uh, pattern, right? And then fell, All right? Now, 
after this, I'm looking for more downside action. That's not what happened. We have a bullish engulfer. Now, what am I looking for price to do from here? Look how price came down here, all right? Broke these highs, broke this high, and it came back and retested the same zone, all right? So resistance becomes support, perhaps, all right? But uh, what I'm looking at is this engulfer. Is price, the next candle, gonna do the same thing this one did? What am I looking for? The base candle to be tested. Why? Look at the rejections here. This is a rejection zone. All right, what happens to price coming this way? We understand, we see it, this is the support. Is it gonna work on this side? I think so. I do, I do think so. I think we're gonna see more upside action here. I think we're gonna take this top and head towards that monthly zone of supply. It's a big gamble, but we'll see. I mean, this thing has formed supply. If supply is taken out, we know that uh, uh, demand is still in control. And bull, the, the, we're, we're looking for buys, understand? It's that simple. Now, I'm going to go to the four hour and we're going to wrap this up. You see this? This looks like a bearish formation, doesn't it? All right. I think I showed you this on the, uh, the Dixie, if I'm not mistaken, on the US dollar index on, on my earlier videos. Do make sure you check out the early videos that I made today. All right. Um, what I'm seeing is my, my pattern, a push up a pullback, a break higher, a higher high, and then a break below the pullback low. Boom. That is a break of structure, folks. So what am I expecting? A return to impulse. Here we are. Here's the impulse. This is where the money is going to be made. If we break with a close past this, then we know, we know we're going up. We're going uptown. I'm waiting for the pullback. Now I'm looking for uh, a long position. It is that simple. However, however, if the supply holds, and there's a chance that it might, if the supply holds, then I need to see demand fail. Okay. And that would be this one, right, John? If demand fails, then demand fails. Hey, I'm looking for shorts. That's it. Easy. So I, I don't get into anything unnecessary and, and risky. All right. I'm going with the flow. The order flow is bullish. All right. Overall, it's bullish order flow. I'm looking for buys. That's it. All right, if price comes down from here, I need it to break and close below this, this level. If it comes down like, like so and gives me that formation, like an inverted head and shoulders, I know this is gonna get taken out. I know that high is gonna get taken out. That's it, that's what I'll be looking for because this will be a higher low and I'm looking for a higher low to make a higher high. You understand? It's that simple. So I, let me draw this properly like I always do. All right. If we get this, oh, come on. All right. We got it. We get this. Ah, oh, this thing is driving me crazy. We get something like this up here. All right. And I don't need it to be that high, really. Get it like that? That's what I'll be looking for. Easy. Easy, peasy, lemon, squeezy. All right. And I'll, and, uh, but I need this to break that low. All right. If, if it doesn't do that, 
does something like this. Come on. Does something like this here. Uh, the, the exact opposite. Come on. Uh, what was that? Who, who's doing this? One, two, two. Same, same situation. If this, this demand holds, I'm looking for this. I need to see this broken though, for me to take shorts. To take shorts, I need to see this broken. But if it comes down here and this, this one holds, this demand holds, I'm looking for a beautiful long from here. That's it, all right? I hope you enjoyed this, all right? Do make sure you check out my earlier video about the weekly outlook where I check all of the individual currencies from a futures perspective and gauge how strong they are or how weak they are as individual currencies so I can better inform my decisions on the pairs, the FX pairs that I'll be trading for the week ahead. I'm sharing that with you. I went into detail on them. So I'm hoping that you gain a bunch of insight from it. All right. I need you to go check out that, that video. I'm going to leave it up on your screen right now. All right. As, I, as we end this. And I want you to make sure you hit the like button for me. Go ahead and do it now. And make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you can catch my notifications of uh, my, my updates, the notifications for my updates, all right? Because I'm always sending them out. And make sure you leave a comment about this setup here on US dollar yen. Do you understand what I was talking about as far as the, the fundamentals? Hey, if you don't, leave a question or enlighten me if you got better information, okay? I will see you in the next video. Thank you for your time.